Welcome to The Secret Place with Steph Abane. Five-minute devotions for hungry hearts and searching souls. Hey there, everybody. Today's reading is from the Holy Scriptures. It's from the book of Ephesians, one of my favorite. This is Stepha in The Secret Place. I think you know that. I have a prayer from Paul, the Apostle Paul, to the believers in Ephesus and surrounding areas. And he says this. This is Ephesians 3, 16 through 21. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now him, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or can imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> that is really, I, it never gets old reading what Paul wrote to the Ephesians there about God's power, about the work of God in our inner being, how he, he created us and he doesn't leave us, just leave us to ourselves. He will work in us and through us. As much as we say, God, work in me and through me. Do a work in me. Help me. He does it. He does it. And one of the things that happened um, last night that's fresh on my mind that I thought I'd share today was one of these inner workings. Now, inner workings uh, to strengthen and empower a person, they come in all kinds of ways. There is absolutely no formula. I have no list for you. Okay, so sit down, pray, read your Bible, then go fast for, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have a formula. I don't think God does either, but he does ask us to seek him. And he does look upon our hearts and the needs in our hearts as we cry out to him. So in this last six weeks, especially with the, the loss of my son, um, my prayers, uh, my singing, my rejoicing, all these things have been, hmm, they've been lower than usual, if I can say it that way. I haven't been on my knees for two hours a day crying out, God, help me. God, why? Help me. Help me. Why did this happen? I haven't. I've been mostly, I think, I think mostly my tears are my prayers. That That's what I think. But I have prayed and I have cried out to God. It's not that I have kept God at a distance. He, you can't. I mean, you, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God's made you. You're his child. His spirit resides in you. And so, you know, he has not been far. I have not been far. It's just not been this very deeply spiritual time of, of, of like, you know, a, a, a prayer. It's almost like I, I relate more this past month or so to the book of Lamentations in the Bible than I ever have before. The book of Psalms and Lamentations than, than some of the other um, scriptures that I've drawn from and, and fed from and, and, and drunk from um, in the past. In any case, I something touched me deeply last night and I'm, I'm going to try to explain it and because it is spiritual and because it's inexplicable, I'm not sure if it'll come off. So I may not even, I may not even publish this, <laughs> this devotion today, but I'm going to go for it because it was really meaningful to me. I was sleeping and I was sleeping late, uh, not been sleeping much at all the past six weeks. But last night I slept, I, I went to sleep late and I slept and my husband came and woke me up. At, at seven o'clock, he goes, hey, it's seven o'clock. Are you okay? I mean, when you're up at four or 3.30 or three or quarter of five every day on end, and then all of a sudden you're not up, you know, seven o'clock, he's coming and he's checking me. Are you okay? Um, and I was in a dead sleep and, and I was dreaming so vividly. 
and the dream was, and I woke up when I, when I woke up and I started saying, telling him what happened, I started weeping and it all started coming to me. I, in the dream, was with Earl and we were in a different country. It wasn't a country I even, I didn't know the name of the country. It almost seemed like another world, but it was another country. And we were traveling and we were in a car but wherever we were going, there were no other people and uh, there were no stores. And uh, we were traveling through what looked like upstate New York to me, like this beautiful farmland with beautiful uh, fields of flowers and fields of, of corn and, and, and just abundant fields. But there was a path through these fields and we seemed to know where we were going. Um, and and I, I, I kind of mentioned to him something like, I want to stop before we go back and I want to take some things home. Um, I especially want to take these beautiful flowers. Can we stop by the side of the road and just pick a few of these delphiniums, these kind of blue, beautiful blue flowers and um, some irises and things like that. And and he complied. And it was interesting because like th these were not our fields, but it was known somehow in the dream. You know how you know things in the dream that no one tells you? It was known that they, it was okay to pick these flowers. You weren't stealing. <laughs> I'm not trying to rationalize. Do we rationalize in our dreams? I don't know. But I picked a few flowers, just a few, and then we finally found ourselves at some kind of a stop. Um, it wasn't a store as much as it was a stop, and there was um, there was a long table there with two people, and I... I I had gathered these few flowers and brought them to one person um, and a whole bag of a whole bag of candy <laughs> a bag of like hard candy root beer barrels and big orange hard candy I don't even like that stuff like where was the chocolate right but it was a bag of abundant candy and uh, I opened it up like um to speak to this lady because because my husband was at the other end of the table trying to like go for money or pay for something that we were, like maybe pay for the flowers or the candy wherever it came from but the woman at the table on his side of the table um, looked up at him and kind of shook her head like what are you talking about you know like what are you, what are you talking about we're, we don't take money here you know and the girl looked confused and um, he said, I, but I got to give you something for this, you know, and she looked up and she turned behind her and there was a man um, sitting at another table, maybe just 20 feet behind her all by himself. There were no other people around, by the way, but it was just this man all by himself. And um, he looked at the woman and I don't know what he said, or he winked at her or something. And she looked at her all. She said, she said, just no, just, just go. Meanwhile, I'm look, I look down at the woman on my side of the table and I say to her, um, I want to give you a few of these. And I looked at her and she was, she was a woman that meant a great deal to me in my life that I loved so deeply and she loved me deeply too. And she died like when she was 54 many years ago or I forget what age she was, but she died many years ago and she was a beautiful woman to look at, blonde and um, so so beautiful on the inside, so sweet. She was literally like a mother to me. And um, I lost her in a couple of ways. I lost her in relationship in the early 80s and I lost her um, to her death. She died shortly after my father died. But there she was, I'd never dreamt of her before. She was so exquisite, so alive. She was just bursting with life, you know? And as I opened this candy bag to her to, to, to give her whatever, it was like, whatever I have, I want to give you some, you know? She went through it and she looked at me with these eyes, these beautiful blue eyes of love. And she said, well, I'll just take a few. She said, I'll take this orange one. I heard her sweet voice again. I'll take this one. And I looked at her. And as I'm looking at her, there were no tears in my eyes. There were no tears in her eyes. No one was crying. Um, it was just this, we locked 
in this beautiful, deep awareness of being together and being alive. And then, like, at that moment, I was waking up. It was like, I was woken up by my husband. And as I started to tell him, uh, I told him who the woman was. And as I started telling him this story, I just burst out crying. And it was like, I said, what do you think that was? He says, I, I think that was spiritual. I think that was spiritual. I think it was an inkling of heaven. And I think it was, too. I think, I, I really think it was, too. Like, I'm... And just so much don't get into like woo woo and signs and this and that, but like that, well, clearly heaven has been on my mind with my son passing, but like I, I really think that dream was a gift to just remind me of the life that's ongoing now in the other realm and that that life goes on and that life is perfect and that life is renewed and that life is without a tear it's without a tear and the bible tells us that he will wipe away every tear from our eyes that there'll be a day there'll be a day where we come together again and the love that we knew the care that we knew here on earth that was so precious flawed but so beautiful and so precious will be found again and we'll know it in an even deeper way. So I guess just to pull this all together, I, I want to go back to Ephesians 3 and say aloud again that um, just as Paul prayed, I pray this too, that, that we, you, being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints, that's all the people of God, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love, to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let's continue to go forward, even if it's with baby steps when we're hurting. Continue to go forward in the love of God, holding on tightly to our Father's hand. He will never let you go. High points and low points, he's got you. Have a great day. I'll be back in the secret place. I hope you come back too. This has been Stefan. Bless you. Bye. Breathe. Listen and receive. Take a moment to soak it all in. Until next time.